Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Regeneration TV. Today's class we're going to be talking about breakthrough and we're going to be talking about how the enemy has already been defeated. And I don't know what you know about this, but today we're going to learn about it. And the reason is because when we're thinking about breakthrough, today we're going to be looking at it through the spiritual side of things. And the there is a real devil and he does have uh, authority, he does have power in this world and there's areas where it seems like we're scared to go into. And I was asking today, we talked to our team and just thinking, think of areas in the world where you think are really, really sinful. Um, excuse me. There was times where I think New Orleans was one where everybody thought, oh my gosh, you know, and that's why I got, that's why I got a tornado or hurricane, whatever happened there. And, you know, we don't know. But, you know, I know that people have said that that was one place to where sin is just rampant. You know, I know that San Francisco is one. There's some people say that San Francisco is a place where sin is heavy in Las Vegas. Um, you know, areas where there's, and, you know, that's not even half of the worst places on earth. There's places on earth where there's, you know, witches and all this crazy stuff happening. And that's big over there. Um, and, you know, what, so what areas are there like that? that you know of, that you're afraid to go in because you feel like that's the, that's the devil's territory or that's bad neighborhood. And just bringing it home is what areas around your house, what areas in the city you live in are like that, do you think? Or what areas uh, of, of relationship do you have? Like they're too far gone, there's no way. And what I, today what I want to go over is that I, the enemy has already been defeated and that we do have the power to break through. And I want to give some verses to you. But I want to start first with what does the pow what power does the enemy have already? And I want to read you a verse. It's in Ephesians 2, 1 to 3. And it says, And you were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we also we all once lived in the passions of our flesh carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just like the rest of mankind. So it says that all of us used to walk like that, the prince of the world, um, following the prince of the world, you know, that we were, we were carried by our sin. You know, that's, that's what dominated our life, and the devil used that to his advantage. We, may, we didn't even know it, but we were working for him because we were so consumed with ourselves. So he has that power over people because we're dead in our sins and he can manipulate and he can do all these things. And so he has that power over humanity. Um, and uh, all, there's some more things, areas where he has power. The Bible says he, has, he came to steal, kill, and destroy. Those are things that he does and we, we see it. Destroying families, robbing people of their futures. Uh, you know, killing people, he's damaging uh, people. And also in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 3 to 4, it says, um, And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel, the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. So it says that the devil also has the ability to blind people to keep them away from the gospel and um, he's got some power here on earth and and he is doing major damage and uh, the the idea is do we understand that and let me ask you a few other questions when did he receive that power over humanity when and and you know when it was it was when Adam and Eve disobeyed God by eating the forbidden fruit from that moment, the curse of humanity begun where we died. We died in our, uh, we were cursed. We had to die. They were going to live forever, but also spiritually we died. And that curse went on through the entire humanity and the devil has had power over us since then. And also uh, in 1 Corinthians fifteen fifty six, I want to read it for you. But the sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. So, you know, our, the curse is that we have sinned, and every one of us has sinned since Adam and Eve. 
and we all disobey the law and the devil uses that to his, his, his advantage because the penalty of sin is death and we're scared of death. But Jesus came to give us a better way. So we know that the devil has that authority and power here on the earth and he's in the Bible. He's called the God of this world. He's called the prince of the power of the air, of the unseen. You know, he's, he's got that authority. But why did Jesus come to earth? Why did he come? And I want to read you a few verses in 1 John 3, 8. Whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil, for the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. See, God saw, Jesus saw that the devil had this power, and he wanted to destroy that. That's why he came to earth. He wanted to give, make the devil powerless over us and there is, he's the only one who could have done it. And I want to read you another verse in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14 to 15. Since therefore the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise partook of the same things that through death he might destroy the one who, was the, who has the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver all those who through fear of death were subject to lifelong slavery. So pretty much Jesus had to become a human and Jesus had to die so that we could be set free from the power of death so that we wouldn't have to live in fear of death. And the reason we're set free from the power of death is because we know that death is not the end for us. Death is just the transition into the next life. And Jesus gave us that hope. So why did he come? That's why he came, to give us freedom, to give us uh, power to over the enemy. And... Uh, and the last question I wanted to ask you is, what did, what did Jesus' death accomplish? What did his death accomplish that he came to die and give us that freedom, that we don't have to be afraid of sin anymore to give us eternal life? What did it accomplish? And I want to just read one verse for you in Colossians 2.15. Um, and, and I'll end with this, Colossians 2.15. And here's what it says. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over them in him. One more time. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over them in him. So why did he come? He came to disarm the power of the devil. The devil has that power, but not anymore. Not over us. You know, God, when Jesus, um, when Jesus gave authority to uh, the 70 disciples in Acts, I, I can't recall the verse exactly, but he said, I see, I see the enemy falling like lightning from the sky. You know, he saw the devil being stripped of that power. And in Colossians 2.15 says he disarmed his ability, his powers. He disarmed them. So the devil you may be scared to go up against him, but you don't have to be. When Jesus is on your side, he's powerless because Jesus has already defeated him. At the cross, he won. He died and he rose again and he beat him. So now that we are walking in this new life, he's given us the power to start fighting, to, to get into battle with the enemy. And we have the power to do it now. Before we were powerless. We were slaves to him. We... we we couldn't do anything, but now Jesus has given us new life. We don't have to be afraid anymore. And also, we have the power to overcome. So, uh, we're going to be continuing on this topic, Breakthrough. The enemy has been defeated, so you do have the power through Christ to battle the enemy, to where he may be stealing, robbing from you, maybe oppressing you. And uh, in your life and in your future, your calling, whatever it may be, you have the power to overcome and to break through that through Jesus because he beat him at the cross. So we're going to stay on this subject. Next week we got a guest speaker coming in. Uh, the to She works at a, um, at a uh, women's health center and she's going to be talking to us on the topic of abortion. Uh, she's going to be chatting with us and then we're going to pick right up where we left off the week after. So stay with us. We, we love you so much. Thank <laughs> you.